What is going on? Charles Botenston here. We got something special today. And before I get into it, let me just preface this because there's probably going to be a ton of people that view this video that have no idea who I am, obviously, because that's only about 3,700 subscribers, hopefully more after this video. But let me just preface this that for 11 years, I've been in the personal development arena, going to seminars, ebooks, audiobooks. I've read probably 700 books by now in the last 11 years. I am a vicious, vicious reader. And I have to put this, and I was actually thinking about this. I'm like, where am I going to put this on, on the top five? Then I started going lower and lower, the top three. And for me, the biggest impact, especially after 11 years, there's not really many books that I read and I'm like, holy shit, that book was great. I'll take a point away or two points away from that. And I say, oh, actually I'm going to, that $15 or that, that course that I took that was $1,000 or that teacher that was $7,000 or whatever the case is, I got this and I'm definitely going to implement it in my life. But I have completely immersed myself in David Goggins the last two weeks. I've read about him, been following him for probably about a year, year and a half now. So I'm completely aware of who he is, what he's about, his backstory, but not his complete backstory as he goes into the book. So it's not like I'm coming in as a newbie and I was like, well, you know, I, I, I kind of know him. I've seen probably, I don't know, maybe a dozen interviews and I've re-listened to them. And then I got the book and I was like, wow. And the reason being is that he doesn't talk about this like he does in the book. He doesn't talk about his upbringing. All right, so let's just talk about the, the upbringing first is that, you know, in today's oppression Olympics, in today's world we, where we want to blame other people, in today's world where we, you, you, it, it feels good and, and we're like levitated for being the victim. This guy, his upbringing in the modern world, I don't know if there's anyone that has, that has gone through what he has gone through and has risen to the heights that he has. And if there is someone, I'm not aware. This guy was verbally abused, belittled, beaten for years, rampant racism, and he talks about this and you when you put yourself there as a seven-year-old as a six-year-old as a five-year-old you're thinking how the fuck do you not just go into drugs or a gang or into jail or alcoholism or something just to relieve the pain that you're going through and he went deep down inside it didn't take him overnight and as he said in 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 the book and by the way as a side note i highly recommend you get the audiobook i got both i actually the book is good i wanted to get it because i wanted to support his cause as well i wanted to support him i got the audiobook you know some people return audiobooks or whatever i'm like give him all the money that he deserves for another reason because as i'll go into the first one i know he's not going to get soft there's a lot of people that put out books, they put out seminars, they put out a bunch of shit. They're not a practitioner. This guy is living the ethos. He only posts once a week and at that, he barely replies to comments because he notices that's how people get soft. So let's just go back into that really quick is that he he's, he's so vulnerable in who he was as in high school. In other words, he was trying to put on a mask. He was trying to be someone else. He was trying to be like, he was trying to be cool. And then one day he looked in the mirror, he calls it the accountability mirror. And he goes, look at the fucking person you've turned into me. In other words, he was being what other people wanted him to be. It, and, and especially in today's world of, of social, it would have been a lot worse. You look at teenagers and what they have to go through on all the people that are more popular, prettier, and everything else. Moving away from that is pretty much everything. So let's just get into it. The first one I've already brought up, which is don't get soft. So he, he kind of goes into it a little bit. He was written up in, in I forgot, Living with a Seal or something like that. I never read the book. It, it, it probably was good. You know, if, if David did not write a book, I probably would have read that because it kind of would have went into the mindset. You kind of want a little bit of that to rub off on you. But he goes into it and he goes, you gotta have the, the knuckle dragger mentality. In other words, and, he, and living with the seal, th this guy, I forgot his name, he's married to, <laughs> I should have looked it up, but a billionaire woman who started Spanx, I forgot her, her name. So they have nannies and cleaners and a big mansion and drivers and private planes probably or first class or business class. And, and David in one of the interviews was like, dude, how, how can you stay hard like that? How can you, in other words, how can you just still have that mentality of let's get the fuck out of life if you're living this, this luxury lifestyle. And at the end of it, you know, once David moves out, in other words, I'm still talking about the other book, Living with a Seal, once, once David, Goggin, David Goggins moves out, you're going to go back to this cushy lifestyle. So that's why David, I, I want to give 
give him the money because I know he's not going to get soft. There's a ton of people in the fitness industry, in the sales industry, in the marketing industry. Like there's marketers without a following. It's like, dude, how can you say you're a social media wizard and you have no following? How could you say you're in the, in the fitness industry and you're out of shape or you, you're not even talking about sleep or you're not even talking about the chemicals and products or, or, or the shitty food or the processed food or you're not even working out or you're not even working out properly. It's like, how, how can you literally say you're a professional? How can you write a book on this? David Goggins is a practitioner. He does this every single day. He's living into the ethos. Moving on. Rise when everyone's down. So this is actually something that I sort of do on the smallest and minor of day to day when I, so my accountability is going to gym classes because I working out by myself it's great and everything else but when I'm doing my third round of burpees and I'm looking around and I see everyone is just just losing it and they're just getting tired I look around and actually I was doing this like I said on a minor scale he's doing it on a major scale in other words ranger school seal school ultra marathons the the pull up record worldwide pull up record so it's totally different but for me I look around and I'm like let's let's get some ass now. And, and the way that he puts it, this is great, is that he has a competition. So if he's on a team, his competition is himself. But when he has competition and he's running a marathon or he's doing the, the pull bar, he sees the other person as his competition which is brilliant. Everyone has that, hopefully. You know, Michael Jordan talks about it. Kobe Bryant has talked about it. They have this dark side that they tap into. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But essentially, what David Goggins says is that right when everyone is ready to collapse, he kicks it up a notch. So they do one of two things. If he's on a team, everyone says, holy shit, look at this leader. And then they, they start going harder or faster. And if he's in a competition and he kicks it up a notch, he wants the other person to quit. And that's brilliant. When everyone's soft, no, you want that other person to be like, holy shit. And then he just sees David Goggins go faster or further. There is a, which selection? It might've been Delta selection when he was in the military. And he's talking about that, where he's, he's on the first ruck, which is about 18 mile ruck. And there was another person in the selection that said, oh, he, he'll slow down, but Goggins never slowed down. So he's kind of already distancing himself before they actually go into the selection phase of Delta Force, which unfortunately he, he didn't end up doing because of a costly error. And obviously you don't want that. You don't, you don't want one time someone fucks up because fucking up in war is death. Or even worse, when there's multiple people involved where a lot of people could die. Be honest, all right? So I wrote down here, listen, everyone's sugarcoating it. You know, live your best self. Or there, there's this fat acceptance, you know, like, no, that's not good. Or for me, for years, I was saying, well, you know, my credit card debt will actually pay itself off. Or for years, I was saying, uh, the economy isn't that good. That's why I'm not getting business. No, you're just not making fucking calls. You're not making business calls. You're not closing deals. If you're in a bad relationship, if you're fat, if you have a, a balance that is in your checking account that's below zero, call it how it is. That's the first step. That's what he's saying. You gotta be honest with yourself. There's too many people running around and then we sugarcoat it to the world on social media and then we just accept it. We just accept mediocrity, which I'm gonna get into in a second. Next thing, everything is earned. This is uh, powerful because a lot of people obviously entitlement, you know, they, they feel because, you know, I'll, I'll give you the, the for me, the example is I'm in real estate in New York City. So people saw this TV show of real estate agents and what million dollar listing selling New York or open house NYC. There's a bunch of them. And this is the thing. I've been on million dollar listing. It is staged and or there's just character development that is not, they're doing it for the drama. Okay. And the thing is the public sees it and they're like, this is great. So you're telling me within 45 minutes, I could sell a $13 million loft in Soho and collect a $400,000 commission? That sounds easy. So what happens is they get their license and they feel they're entitled to that $13 million loft. No, there's sharks out there that will cut your legs down because they don't want to give up that $450,000 commission. They feel like they're entitled to the business or they're entitled to, I don't know, losing weight or money or, or something. It doesn't really matter. Everything is earned. I'll go into this last thing. Happiness that you do not earn is fleeting. So in other words, happy, so something that you, you don't earn is a gift or someone uh, provides you with something free and then it's fleeting because you just accept it. Thank you for the gift or thank you for that free, I don't know, office space. You know, agents that I hire look around this office space, which is $3,000 a month and they go, oh, you know, they don't feel, but I've earned 
this office space. So he goes, true happiness is on the other side of suffering. Suffering for me, obviously, yes, there's some physical component for 45 minutes in the morning, but then after that, I get added sales calls, rejection, closing business, things like that. 40% governor. This is probably one of the most original ideas that I've heard, and I started looking at myself. So every car has a governor. Well, I don't know about every car, but a lot of cars have governors. They could go 150 miles an hour or 130 miles, whatever, I don't know. There's a lot of cars that could go faster than they are, and the manufacturer puts a governor on it because they say, I don't think we we want the person to go 150 miles an hour and there's no need to go 150 miles an hour unless you're being chased by the cops. So what he says is that look at your life, look at your inventory or take inventory on your life. And he brings up the 40%. I don't think a lot of people are living at 40%. I looked at myself and I was like, I'm only living at about 20%, 15% at times. That's pathetic. That is embarrassing to even say. So what he's saying is go to 30%, go to 35%. And just when your mind and your body says, I want to quit, I want to go back where it's warm, I, I want to stop making sales calls, or I did enough, he says, go 5% further. Because on the other side of that, that's when you're made. That's when you understand, holy shit, I actually have a lot more in me. I thought I had a, I thought I had an end, or I, I thought I had a stopping gauge where I just made too many calls, or I approached the pretty girl and she said no. Well, go and approach 10. Then after the 10th one, you say, holy shit, I didn't even know that was possible. And that's where David Goggins got when he did a 24 hour, one mile loop to, I think it was for the Bad the Badwater Ultra Marathon. It was one of the, it might've been that, where you had to qualify for it. So you had to do a hundred mile race, and he did 24 hours of running a one mile track. That's insane, that's, that's mental. But he said on the other side of that, he was basking in that feeling that he got when he was sitting in the tub, he was shitting down his pants, literally. He was pissing blood and he goes, this is amazing. I don't know if he said it's amazing, but he said he, he loved that feeling because he didn't even know he can get there. He didn't even know it was physically possible. Which is, goes to the next point. All right, so we only have two more points. I know this is a long one, um, but the book is just freak. It's just a freak book because there's a lot of books. Okay, let's just get into this. So be uncommon. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of average, there's a lot of mediocrity. And this is the thing, obviously Jordan Peterson popular, popularized this with lobsters. When a lobster is trying to climb out of a cage, or I think it's crabs, one of them, is trying to cr uh, climb out of a cage, other ones, other lobsters pull that person or that, that crab lobster down. Get back into the cage. Get back into the water. Get back into the bucket. So that's our life. We surround ourselves with family, society, friends, colleagues, even mentors, or even people that we read about. We just surround ourselves with average, with mediocrity, with no, people that aren't, that aren't even practitioners, as I talked about before. You know, people that they've read a bunch of books on sales, read a bunch of, of fitness books, or, or read, you know, this is how you actually play golf. Do you know how to play golf? Are you really good at golf? Are you the top golf player at one time? Have you made a sales call? Have you actually done marketing? Why is your following so small? Why are you out of shape, yet you're giving me advice on fitness? I, I see that all the time at the gym. I'm like, how the fuck does this trainer, listen, if there's a, a, if you're an older trainer, dude, be a practitioner, do it. I was talking to a trainer at Equinox, which is an expensive gym here in New York City. And the guy's like, man, I don't have time to train anymore. You're a fucking trainer at a gym for free. And you don't have time. You don't have time. Really? That, that's a person living at about 10%, 15%. I, I didn't even want to agree with him. And I didn't, but I didn't, I didn't even want to be in that conversation for him to say, I don't have time to, tra you're at a fucking gym all day. You have time between your appointments, get in a workout. All right, last thing is motivation is temporary. What it comes down to is there has to be a dark side that we all tap. You know, he, he says it's a bag of fuck. So you reach down into that, that, that bag of fuck. And that's, that's the dark soul of your being. When shit is real, when it's raining, when it's cold, when you're tired, when, you're, when your wheels on your bike blow out, when, you're, when your knees are killing you, your back is breaking, when your, your shoulders are giving out, when your, your mindset and everything is just, is just getting bad, that's when you have to get good. And you have to go into this deep, deep closet. They talk about the shadow. Go into the shadow. You can't look on the outside because anyone on the outside is quitting, is slowing down. But deep down inside, you have to have a why. You have to have something that says, keep on going, one foot in front of the other, Pe keep on pedaling, one more rep, whatever the case is, all right? So motivation is, yeah, let's get out there, but then it's cold or it's snowing or it's raining 
where it's a steep slope. That's when things get real. And listen, it's all mindset. Uh, life is a head game, master it. And this is actually great. Is So in other words, when, he, when shit gets real, he says, if I can go through this, how much harder as a person will I be? That's the question he asks. And he says, instead of the question, can I do this? Ask yourself, what am I capable of? Like, what can I do? You know, are, are 10 calls enough? What about 15? What about 20 calls if you're calling for business? And then last points, I know we're probably on like 20 minutes here, but got to get the book. Here are the last points is that it's all about daily consistency. Do it every single day. Knowledge is gained from suffering. So in other words, no knowledge is gained from a book. Yeah, knowledge is gained from a book, but when you're a practitioner and you're making calls, you're getting the rejection. When you have to handle objections, that's better. Hard workouts, failures. Uh, next point, show up. You have to put yourself in the position to succeed. And this is actually one of the best things that I've heard is that he goes, he goes, you want to, so he, he believes in God. Whatever you want to call it, source, universe, uh, living your full potential, karma, whatever the fuck, I don't give a shit. Whatever you want to call it. So he believes that at one time when he's looking down, whether you believe or not, stop going there. Go to the point of this, this, this in your mind. You're there, you're dead, you're being on, you're, you're at judgment day and God has a chart and he says, hey, listen, by the way, you could have done this, you could have done that. And you're looking at, you're like, no, 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 that's not me, that's someone else. Like, no, no, you've cut it, you could have done this. And then lists a bunch of things that you always wanted to do and you think that's someone else but that's actually you not living to where you should be going. David Goggins says he wants to get there and God be like, I didn't see that coming. This is, this is your list? In other words, surprise the judgment day that comes. Because if you read the, the, the book, Top Five Regrets of the Dying, obviously, never oh okay this is this is the life i should live no no what's the life you actually are living you want to regret things that you did rather than you didn't do you got to pick up the book and the reason i say that is that you know i've read adam brown's book which is unbelievable i've read marcus luttrell's book unbelievable unbroken world war ii veteran who was in a pow that was i forgot his name it's slipping the top of my head but this is a book of a guy that went through it and actually broke it down in other words he wanted to push his mindset the other ones on military or practitioner books of say self self-help maybe they're not doing it or maybe they did it but they didn't break it down for us this is bold this isn't someone that had a cushy lifestyle and says this is what you do he said i've had awful upbringing for 18 years of my life mentally physically however you want it spiritually drained this is how i overcame it highly recommend you pick up the book link is below if you want to buy it on amazon through that link awesome i get 10 cents i have no idea but buy the book and and really just support the guy because his work is going to be way more necessary than all the bullshit that you see on tv have an amazing day subscribe to the video leave your comments below let me know anything that i missed and of course i'll talk to you guys soon